Welcome back to section 7.3 on linear independence. In this video we're going to make the link between linear independence and span. And we're going to do that by starting with theorem 7.3.1. So let's go ahead and read the statement of the theorem. The set v1, v2 through vk is linearly dependent if and only if at least one of the vectors in the set is in the span of the remaining vectors. So let's go ahead and prove this. This is an if and only if proof, which means we need to do proofs in two directions. So we're going to start by assuming that the set that we're given, v1, v2 through to vk, is linearly dependent which means that the dependence equation a1v1 plus a2v2 up to akvk equals 0 has a non-zero solution. So without any loss of generality Let us assume that it is a1 that is non-zero. And if it's not, well, we can just write the vectors in another order so we do have the first coefficient as non-zero. Then, if we rearrange the dependence equation, we'll get a1v1 is minus a2v2 minus all the way up to akvk. And because we have a non-zero first coefficient. We can divide each of those terms by a1. We have just expressed v1 as a linear combination of the vectors v1, v2, Nope, not v1, of the vectors v2 through to vk. Therefore, v1 is in the span of these vectors v2 through to vk, which lets us conclude that at least one of the vectors in our case v1, is in the span of the remaining vectors. So that is only half the proof. The second half needs to go in the other direction, and you will do that in the exercises that accompany these videos. So let's go on and read the two corollaries. Corollaries are results that follow immediately after a theorem. So we've got corollary 7.3.1.1 that a set of two vectors v1, v2 is linearly dependent if and only if those vectors are parallel. Right. So our previous theorem said that one vector has to be in the span of another of the remaining vectors. Well, if there's only one vector, that means a scalar multiple. We've seen that before in previous videos, and so that corollary follows immediately. Corollary 7.3.1.2 says that the set of v1 through vk is linearly independent if and only if no vector is in the set, sorry, no vector in the set is in the span of the other vectors. That's just a free phrasing of the theorem in terms of linear independence rather than dependence. So let's go and fill out the takeaway, which is the uh, geometric interpretation with respect to span of linear independence. So a rephrasing of corollary 7.3.1.2 is that this set of vectors v1 through vk is linearly independent if and only if there are no 
redundant generators generating vectors in the span, meaning every vector is essential, every generating vector, every vector of these is essential in generating the span. Said another way, the set v1 through vk is linearly independent if and only if removing any of the generators changes the span. And conversely, and conversely, so actually, I mean, if we remove one of the generators, obviously it wouldn't be the span of these vectors anymore. Conversely, v1 through vk is linearly dependent if and only if it is possible to remove at least one of the generators without changing the span.